A new patch got released on August 3 and Bethesda did a stealthy release of almost 20 new rewards for Treasure Hunter pills. Check them out! Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. In this one, I will show you all the 18 new rewards Bethesda added to the Treasure Hunter Pill Rewards pool. This type of information is not on their patch notes, but the data miner Garust mined a long list of new rewards a while ago, which was supposed to come live with update 30, but now it's live with the 29. It's a bit confusing, I know, but it is live right now. On the other hand, the next Treasure Hunter event is not happening before mid-September, at least according to the ongoing community calendar. So how comes players are already unlocking the new rewards when the hunters haven't been live since the new update? Well, that's because if you have pills from the previous editions or buy them from someone else, you can open them now for a chance to roll new entries. Just so you know, this video was done on custom worlds with the free crafting option enabled on the public test servers. That's how I could craft pills for free and unlock all the rewards easily. Alright then, with that out of the way, let's jump right into the new rewards. Let's begin with the new Garahan Foreman costume. It's a very fitting reward for Treasure Hunter rewards. After all, it's a mining helmet and outfit. What's best than that? for a new reward. Here's the front and back view, I especially like the jacket and the hood, it's pretty nice. Now this costume might look great, but it's not exactly original, because not too long ago Bethesda released the Garaham employee costume through the Atomic Shop, which uses the same exact model, the difference lies within the colors. Yeah, I'm not so sure I support this recycling concept, but hey, it's definitely a new reward. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the two costumes in case you're confused about what I mean. The employee costume is darker and bronzy with the brown colors, while the new foreman uses mostly yellow and orange tones. This new reward is nothing more than a recolored skin or variant of the employee costume. Anyway, here's a zoom in to show the details, front and back. Well then, got a look at the bright side here. At least now, everyone has a chance to put their hands on the Garahan costume, that's for sure. In contrast with the first two new rewards, this one is very unique, with a top-notch wasteland vibe. I mean, just look at that. A junkyard fountain? It looks like something people would totally come up with in a post-apocalyptic scenario, don't you think? They just use whatever they can find to build and create things that improve their well-being and commodity. Thumbs up to the employee who created this item, it's really fitting. Anyway, this item works like any other fountain we have in the game already. You can directly drink water from it or collect water. It's not purified though, so watch out. In fact, if you zoom in, you can see the water runs through a lot of junk, rust and stuff. The water is even green, which is a very neat indicator that you shouldn't drink it as it is. Anyhow, the junkyard fountain is a decent water source to have around, and it also serves as a stunning decor item for your camp, so why not have it? Next, let me introduce you to the Cave Cricket Tube. It's another one for your science or med bay collection. It's an interesting choice though, that's for sure, but I believe they need to rework this item a little bit. First of all, the position is just strange, like really strange. And secondly, the cricket is lacking texture big time. If you zoom into the insect, you can see that it's like a mass of color, a blob. There is hardly any details or texture there. I think even the tube's glass has more texture than the cricket itself, which is pretty hilarious. I mean, how? How, how is that possible? Anyway, it's the era of the tubes in 76, so brace yourselves for yet another one. As I just said, tubes and more tubes. The next new reward is a Yagwai tube, at least this one looks better than the cricket, 
First, because this huge creature is way more fitting for this large, tall tube. And secondly, the wasteland bear has a lot more texture on its body. So it will naturally look great anywhere you decide to place it, really. When you zoom in, you can see uh, all the four details, as well as some bites and scratch marks on the preserved body, among other details. It's pretty nice. But guys, the tubes don't end here. I mean, for now it does, but expect more to come in future patches. That's all I will say for now. Alright, this new free reward is my favorite one from the entire list. It's the TV Aquarium, a floor decor item with a touch of nostalgia. It's vintage, modern, and it manages to fit right into the wasteland concept all at the same time. How crazy is that? It's awesome, another huge thumbs up to whoever came up with this idea. The fish lamp was already great and popular, but using an old TV to turn it into this sort of aquarium is genius. Anyway, if you zoom into the screen, you can spot different fishes swimming and passing by, while the background features some electronic parts and some greens. Actually, you can see different objects depending on the angle you place this item, as shown here. Moreover, the back looks like a very old sound column or TV screen with that black sort of net wall. I think most of you guys will really want to unlock this item, it's just one of those decor items you must have even if you don't use it it's there it's nice it's always convenient to have it at hand at least i think so next we have the vault girl small statue another new floor decor item which will give a warm welcome to your guests if you decide to place it at your camp of course the statue is rather small as the name says and the vault girl is smiling and holding a welcome wooden sign as well as a lamp too bad it doesn't shine, it's not a lamp after all, so it's normal that it doesn't shine. She's placed on a round background with mushrooms as well. It's a pretty cute entry, it's nothing too special in my view, but at least it's new and joyful, so bring it on. Recently, Bethesda has been releasing quite some carpets or rugs, both as free and paid items. Now, they added this West Virginia state bird rug with lots of cardinal birds, the bird of the state, as you guys have taught me over time, thanks by the way. In this white and light blue rug, you can see lots of cardinal birds on tree branches. It's another joyful and colorful entry, that's for sure. I even zoomed in and surprisingly there's quite some detail there on the paintings. You can notice the roughness of the rug. Hey, at least it's not plain. If you are wondering how big or small it is, here's a size comparison with my character and a foundation. It basically fills one foundation, so I would say it's pretty large. There's plenty of new decor coming with this batch of new rewards, as you surely noticed by now, and the fire alarm is one of them. This is an interactive wall decor, a very noisy one, I might add. You can turn it on or off at your own will. Too bad camps can't really get on fire, that would be a pretty realistic feature though. Anyhow, you can build up to 12 per camp or workshop. Why would you want to build that many though? I wouldn't know, but I did it anyway in the name of science. I actually wanted to see if the sound effect stacks or not. How noisy can this item get? The result was unexpected. It only stacks up to two alarms at once. Any further additions will not enable any extra sounds. Hear it out yourself. So if you want to make an annoying camp, keep in mind that two alarms do the same job as 12, just saying. Bethesda also added two new plushies to the Treasure Hunter pills. Yep, the first one live with patch 29 is the Scorch Beast Queen plushie, under floor decor as usual. It's this sort of green and pink figure, which resembles more a demon or gargoyle than a Scorch Beast. Hey, it's a plushie, so we gotta embrace the humor or the lack of it. I mean, why green? The queen is definitely not green, last I checked. 
Uh, moving forward, I think this is probably the most terrifying plushie we ever got, which is not exactly a bad thing. Diversity is always a plus in my view. Well, feel free to build it solo or in a group. You can actually tell a story with the amount of plushies we have at this point. The stage is yours. The second new plushie joining the collection is the Snaily Gaster, also under floor decor. This one is a more accurate version of the real monster. Well, apart from this green color, aren't they usually like beige, yellowish? Shh. It's supposed to be a glowing one. Oh yeah, sorry. Anyway, when I look at it, it reminds me of turtles, especially if I look at the back. Anyway, this one is really cute and quite unusual. At least there is one thing they replicated very faithfully, the teeth. Just look at these giant squares. Ah, scary stuff. Good thing plushies can't bite. Yeah, definitely a great thing. There is a new backpack skin joining the leaks too. This new camouflage paint uses the existing responders model. It's the exact same, it's just now it applies the camo texture and that's it. I mean, it looks nice and everything, but it doesn't stop being another variation or recolored item, pretty much. Now, don't forget you need to mod your backpack at any armor bench to apply this skin. Let me show you some zoom-ins for the mighty details. Surprisingly, it has some nice details as well, especially on the zippers and handle. Overall, I think it's a great paint, plus it matches with a lot of other items which have camo paints as well. So it's really not that bad, even if it's not an original item. Next, let me show you some new named weapons. Can you guess what it is? More cursed stuff. That's right, script material. <clears throat> now, seriously, I really don't understand why they keep adding these cursed weapons nobody wants to use. This time we have a cursed sickle with the vampire's effect, one bonus endurance point and 40% attack speed. I mean, the effects are not the worst ever, but it's still a sickle. There are dozens of melee weapons with a better base damage. Actually, if you compare it to the other cursed melee weapons, you can spot that immediately. Even the cursed shovel and pickaxe can hurt more. Well, at least it serves its purpose as a reliable script reward. Let's leave it there. There's a second new cursed weapon introduced with patch 29. It's the cursed broadsider. It comes with the anti-armor prefix, followed by increased VATS, heat damage, and 25% less VATS action point cost. Again, the effects are not terrible. Anti-armor on launchers is pretty strong, but it's not like broadsiders are very popular. Well, if you exclude the hacked one, griefers used to blind other players, of course. Normal broadsiders are on the weak side. Missile launchers and even the auto grenade launcher are much, much stronger damage wise. So for me, it's the same conclusion as the sickle, a more script material. They should rename cursed weapons to script weapons. It would make more sense, at least. Let's move on. All right, now let's move to some new entries, which are old nuclear winter rewards. As you may or may not know yet, but as there has been redistributing most nuclear winter rewards throughout adventure activities, and Treasure Hunter Peels received four of them. First of all, we have the small supply crate, which is this blue vault tech box, very common in nuclear winter and inside of vault 51 as well. This is or used to be a very early reward unlocked at rank 5. You can now find it under stash in building mode after learning the plan. Next, we have the Pink Sprinkles Power Armor Paint, another nuclear winter reward unlocked at rank 44 that is now available in adventure mode. This flashy paint can be applied to different types of power armor, such as the T45, T51, T60, Excavator and X01 variations, like the Strangler Heart 1, which is what I'm using in the footage. If you love candy and donuts and you haven't unlocked this one yet, then you might want to farm for it. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, more nuclear winter stuff. The blue camo paint for laser guns was a reward for rank 21 and it can now be obtained through two ways. One of them is obviously through the treasure hunter peels and the second is to directly picking it up um, at Joel and Elizabeth's chamber inside of Vault 51. The blue camo paint is one of my favorites in 76, so I highly recommend you guys to get it if you haven't yet. Just look at that. Cold and fancy. Hmm. The last new reward on the list is the Nuclear Winter Atom Cats paint for the missile launchers, a reward previously unlocked at rank 46. It looks like this. It's this red paint with flames all over it. It's a pretty badass one. It totally fits most of the Raiders and Blood Eagle cosmetics, so it's another great paint to collect if you haven't yet. It's definitely a new season for Treasure Hunter rewards. I know they are not live yet to farm and it should take at least a mount until they make their way into the official servers on September 16. I'm not sure why Bethesda enabled all these new rewards already when most players cannot farm or access them, but hey, they are live since update 29 and you can definitely get them if you own any Treasure Hunter pills, as I explain in the intro. These are the 18 new additions to the rewards pool, 14 are brand new items, well, some are variations, but still new. And then we have four Nuclear Winter rewards, which are not exactly new new, but they are new additions to the pool nonetheless. Well, that's it from my end, I hope I could keep you up to date with the new Hunter rewards. Which one is your favorite so far? Do let me know in the comments below. Now, feel free to leave a like and subscribe to help my channel grow. And as usual, a special thanks to all my dear supporters. You guys make the difference for me. All right then, time for me to go. I will see you very, very soon in the next one. Until then, take care. Adios. Bye bye.